Chapter 2 is the healthcare delivery system. As I'm sure you have un can understand by now, the United States healthcare system is extremely complex and it is changing all the time. According to the American Nursing Association, nursing is to promote the health, well comfort, well being, dignity, and humanity of all individuals families, groups, and population. Nursing focuses on the healthcare consumer is enhanced by our interprofessional collaboration, our shared knowledge, our scientific discovery, our integrative healthcare approaches, and we're concerned about social justice. When considering social justice, one must think of the uninsured. These individuals have no health care insurance, yet they still require our help. We as nurses are trying to improve access for our patients. We're working on improving as well as maintaining the current quality and safety measures. And we are always concerned about our consumer or our patient's money, so we're thinking about decreasing the cost of health care. Preventive level of health care is the art of preventing any sort of issues for our patients. One must think about blood pressure screenings, HIV screenings for adults, wellness visits, immunizations, mental health counseling. Primary care thinks about improving health care outcomes for a large population by promoting health care visits, education, adequate nutrition. We think about maternal child health, family planning, immunization, and control of diseases. Secondary health, health care considers a specialist or an agency that is referred to by the primary health care provider. It requires more specialized knowledge, skill, and training. Tertiary health care is a special type of consultive care. Usually it is required on the referral of the secondary medical personnel. We can think of secondary and tertiary care also as acute care. Think of your patients that are in a hospital system. The care is expensive and oftentimes it can be delayed Preventive care, looking at it through the nursing scope, thinks about improving health care measures for a large group or a population of people. We as nurses aim to decrease the risk factors for a specific disease. Primary care, they think about improving specific health care outcomes but it does require us to work together as a team. When we promote health care, this can help decrease the amount of money that is spent. It can also lessen the amount of the disease process, decrease complications of the disease, and it can also decrease the amount of money spent related to additional requirements or treatments. Remember, secondary health care is provided by a specialist or an agency that has been referred to by the primary care physician. It requires someone that has more skilled knowledge, equipment, and um, specialization than just a primary care physician. Both secondary and tertiary care can also be thought of as acute care. 
This type of health care is very expensive. Consider going to the emergency department. All right, you are there and it takes you four hours until you see a doctor. It's very expensive care. As a nurse, we believe that discharge planning begins upon admission. So that first nurse that does the overall head to toe assessment, as well as the looks at the healthcare history of the patient, this will help determine what is needed for continuing care for this patient. This assists us as nurses to figure out what the patient needs and it can also start that process for the patient while they are still within the hospital system. As a nurse considering restorative care, if you recall as nurses we try to help our patients obtain their own best level of health and wellness. So when you think about restorative care, it is to help individuals regain their own maximum functioning status. We also help and aim toward enhancing their quality of life. We always think about promoting their independence as well as their self-care. Home care is when we provide services of medically related individuals and equipment to patients and families in their homes. This will assist in maintaining their health, increase their education, prevent, or promotes illness prevention, diagnosis and treatment of the disease process, rehabilitation, as well as palliative care. Rehabilitation to nurses is the process that is designed to enable individuals with disabilities to reach and maintain their optimal level of wellness for themselves. Extended care facilities, these, place, these institutions may provide medical, assistance, nursing assistance, or custodial care for individuals that are recovering from some sort of acute illness or individuals that may have a chronic illness or a disability. Remember, restorative care is to assist individuals gain their maximum functioning wellness and we want to help increase their quality of life because we as nurses promote independence and self-care. Rehabilitation, it is a process that helps enable individuals that have disabilities to reach their maximum wellness potential for themselves. Extended care services assist patients that recover from an acute illness or sometimes individuals that may have a chronic illness. An intermediate or a skilled facility, this is skilled care from a licensed nursing staff. This can include IV administration, maybe wound care, ventilators, and rehabilitation. When we consider continuing care, this can be a multitude of health, personal, or even social services that, ass that assist an individual over an extended period of time. These are for people that may have disabilities, who may not have been um, functionally independent or those individuals that may have 
a terminal illness. Out of all that are listed, I'm focusing on palliative care and hospice. So palliative care is considered as a holistic patient and as well as a family-centered approach with the goal of improving the quality of life of a patient as well as their families that are re um, for individuals that are having a life <clears throat> life um, experience that may an illness that may be threatening it is um, delivered oftentimes through a continuum of care oftentimes an advanced practice nurse practitioner maybe the individual that will visit with the patient they look at identifying and treating different problems Think about pain, think about continuing care, as well as helping individuals make good decisions. Hospice is an actual system of, it's all family centered. It allows patients that are terminal to live with comfort, independence, and dignity while it works on easing the individual's pain. Miss Riley, a 15-year-old white female of Irish descent, is a freshman at a Catholic high school. Although her parents are divorced, she reports her family, she has two brothers and lives with her mother, is close and that her parents work together to meet their needs. She's had asthma since she was five and she controls it by taking oral sterile, I'm sorry, oral medications and by using inhalers. So as a nurse, what concerns would you have if you were the school nurse about her getting medical care? An assisted living facility, this type of facility offers an attractive environment to the elderly. It has a home that's, or I mean, excuse me, an environment that's more like a home-like feel. And the individual has greater autonomy, yet has assistance nearby if needed. Respite care is a type of service that offers small time or short term relief. It provides a new environment or time to relax for the caregivers that support individuals that may be ill or frail. When you think of respite care, think of the family members that are caring for terminally ill. They need time away so they can regroup and recoup. So that is why we have respite care for our individuals. A patient who needs nursing and rehabilitation following a stroke would most benefit from receiving care at a The answer is B, restorative care setting. Remember, the goals of restorative care are to assist individuals regain their maximum functioning status, as well as enhancing their quality of life while promoting self-independence and care. Considering adult daycare centers, these oftentimes may be patients that might need extenuating health care services, but do not maybe require hospitalization. Think of individuals that may need physical therapy, meals, or maybe even counseling. While yet the family member that actually provides their care is working. 
palliative care. This is the continuum of care that focuses on the early identification as well as treatment of any problems. Also thinks about relieving pain and suffering, continuing care, and assisting both patients and family make informed decision. This can be delivered in any healthcare setting. Hospice, if you recall, assists patients and their families that are suffering from a terminal illness. This allows the individual to live comfortably, independently, and have dignity while decreasing their pain of their terminal illness. As a nurse, it is my responsibility to provide my patient's care with the most qualified knowledge I can to help make changes within the healthcare system. That is why I, as a nurse, need to participate in every aspect of the healthcare system. Social Security Act, it made a system of a payment for the operating costs of acute care, inpatient stays under Medicare Part A, based on set rates. The Affordable Care Act, this brings payment to the organizations that offer Medicare Advantage plans, but it holds them to a standard of quality ratings of the coverage that they offer. If the hospital doesn't perform adequately and they have low quality scores, then they are going to receive lower amount of payments for their services. Technological advances in healthcare. The answer is D. They do not replace our sound nursing judgment. Technology helps make nursing work easier, but it does not replace our judgment as nurses. Here's an example. It is your responsibility, ability, responsibility, sorry, when managing a patient's IV therapy to monitor the infusion to make sure that it infuses on time and without any complications. An electronic infusion device does provide a constant rate of infusion, but a nurse needs to be sure that the nurse calculates the rate correctly. The device sets off an alarm if the infusion slows, making it important for the nurse to respond to that alarm and think about and troubleshoot the problem. So, technology today does not replace the nurse's critical thought process and their clinical judgment. So, by the year of 2028, the registered nurse workforce is expected to grow by 12%. However, even though they're growing by 12%, we still need 203,000 replacement nurses. So, that brings the total number of registered nursing positions to 3.4 million by 2026. It has been also shown that there is direct correlation between patient care that is directly given, that is provided by a registered nurse, and increased positive patient outcomes. As a registered nurse, for the quality and safety of our patients, 
we are to make sure that we are competent related to patient-centered care, teamwork and collaboration, evidence-based practice, quality improvement, safety, as well as informatics, according to the QSEN competencies. Competency for a nurse is something that is considered individual for that nurse. It is our responsibility as a nurse to make sure that we maintain competency throughout our nursing practice. The Institution of Medicine believes that patient-centered care is respectful and responsive to the actual patient preferences, needs, values, and it ensures that the values guide the decisions that are made for that patient within the clinical institution. The American Nurses Credentialing Center, ANCC, established this magnet recognition program. This is stated to recognize healthcare institutions that achieve excellence within our nursing practice and profession. These institutions that do apply for the magnet status, they have to demonstrate high quality patient care, excellence in nursing, as well as innovations in all perfective, excuse me, professional practices. Technology today is rapidly changing the healthcare environment, the way healthcare is delivered, and how both professionals and patients look at healthcare today. Healthcare disparities include the way individuals access healthcare, the quality of healthcare, that they are provided, the equity in the health care that they are provided, social determinants affect health care disparities. These are the conditions and environments in which people are born, live, and work that affect their health and their quality of life outcomes and their risks. So, Amy Sue's difficulty managing her asthma is hard for Kareen because Kareen's oldest daughter has asthma. Plus, because her job is in the pediatrician's office, she's experienced taking care of individuals with asthma and assisting all types of patients. So thinking critically, how does Corrine's personal experience with her own daughter relate to the care of this patient? As nurses that have been through the pandemic, we stop and we ponder and consider what's going to happen in the future of our healthcare environment. Well, we already know that telehealth or telemedicine is the newest use of electronic information and communication that assists individuals to provide patient care when the healthcare provider and the patient are in different places. The only issue is both individuals must have access to the internet. So when we think back, we talk about disparities in healthcare, would this not be a disparity for individuals that do not have internet access? Therefore, they cannot have telehealth or telemedicine. Considering your case study, 
The patient has difficulty breathing during some of the gym classes. Corrine, she's a 45-year-old African-American nurse. She accepted the job as a school nurse for four different Catholic schools within her area. Three of the schools are grade school and one is the high school. Before she took this job, Corrine was a pediatric nurse that worked in the physician's office. So how will Corrine's work experience help her assist the patient to access the healthcare delivery system? And what barriers to care might the patient face 